Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining this late afternoon session. Um, and today uh, we are going to talk about this new Python automation framework called Nornier. There are many different network automation tools out there and the new ones uh, keep appearing like every month. It's really hard to keep track of them. Many of those impose their uh, limits and constraints on how you build your network automation. Um, and in this session, you'll take a look at this, uh, this framework and see how it's different to all these other tools available out there. Um, I hope that by the end of the session, you will learn enough to be able to get started and to be able to build your first network automation scripts using this framework. I also hope you will be able to see its power and its flexibility by the end of this session. Um, we also have WebEx Teams room, like with every other session. Uh, I will not be monitoring questions during the session, but um, afterwards, feel free to ask anything you want. Also, you can find me here around the DevNet area during the whole week. Um, let's take a look at our agenda. We'll spend on slides really minimum, a minimal amount of time. I really do not uh, like talking about slides and describing them. Uh, we will. Um, you will see what is Nornier, how it's compared to this very popular uh, network automation tool called Ansible, but the rest of it is going to be a live demo. So I have something interesting for you. Um, one more thing, we do have, I do have these uh, NetDevOps ribbons, so if you stay until the end of the session, feel free to grab one at the end. Okay. Uh, by the way, all code that I will be sharing is available. Uh, there is QR code here as well. It's the QR code will be also at the end um, if, you want, if you want to take a look at that. All right, so let me, let me share with you a very short story how I got involved into the project. Um, so, some, so what I'm doing is um, almost every Sunday I have my stream, uh, live streams about network programmability on the Internet. You can find me online and recordings of those if you want to. And on one of the stream, like around one and a half years ago, someone asked me, hey, Dmitry, what do you think about this new automation framework uh, called Brigade? This was its previous name. And like, uh, the only thing I knew about it is that I read a single article. I haven't tried it. And from the first look, it was, uh, I, replied, I replied this. I'm not sure why they're reinventing Ansible. Uh, then later, um, I got a project at work where we, are tr we were trying to automate our uh, data center, which is where we spin up some of our internal labs. Um, and the task was really huge. We needed, uh, we needed as much automation as we can get. And I started uh, building it with Ansible because it was the most popular network automation tool out there all. It still is. Um, but very quickly, I realized that it was not the right tool for the job. I spent a lot of time troubleshooting, debugging um, mistakes in my playbooks. Uh, we needed to build custom functionality, so I had to write my own modules. And even though I I'm quite experienced Python developer, uh, and it was not as easy as I thought it would be because I, I know how to do any, everything I need in Python, but uh, porting that to Ansible module was actually quite a challenge. Uh, and it also, it was also uh, not as fast as I thought it would be. So we had, we had a bunch of different things. So in the end, we got to a working prototype with Ansible. However, I really disliked the solution. I realized that it would be really hard to maintain this. Um, going forward. So uh, I took a look at, um, at Nornier. And uh, from the first glance, I realized it's, this was exactly what I needed. Um, and I started playing with it more. I, I think I read the whole code base in like two evenings or so. Uh, it proved to be very simple, very easy to get started. And I could extend it in any way uh, I want. So I got back to uh, maintainers and said, I would like to help you maintain Nornier. So this was nine months later from my uh, first statement. Uh, so um, other people who are maintaining this project are David Barroso, who some, uh, some of you may know from his Napalm project. 
Another one is Kirk Byers, who is creator of NetMiko library, both very popular Python projects. Um, it's also very, um, very important to point out that uh, Nornir is a completely open source project. It's, uh, it's community driven, supported by community as well. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, before we will go to Nornir, just one slide, why not Ansible? Let me summarize some of the things that I already told you. The first and foremost, your tasks are written in DSL, a domain specific language. And as uh, much as people like to tell me on the internet that when you're writing Ansible um, playbooks, you're not programming, um, I tend to disagree with them. Um, so it's very declarative, yes, but essentially when you start applying this to your production environment, you have a bunch of requirements, like you want to have some specific format, you want to like chain tasks, you have a lot of stuff going on. Essentially, you will start using constructs like registering the variables, which is just a variable assignment. You will start using when statements, which is a condition. You will uh, start using loops. And all of these are programming, uh, programming uh, building blocks. So essentially what you are doing is that you are programming in Ansible, uh, sorry, programming in YAML. However, even though you are doing that, you are losing all advantages of actual programming language. Because in YAML, you will not have ID support, you will not have proper linting, you will not have static type checking, and all of these tools available for you in every programming language, you will not have them. Second, troubleshooting, debugging, and maintaining playbooks is hard. So like, I can tell you a thousand times, thousand situations where I made some kind of mistake in playbook and it was really hard to find it. Um, and I can't imagine what's going through the head of people who are supporting other people playbooks. Um, honestly, I think it's not really maintainable. Another one is, I, I believe it's inflexible. There are problems when you need custom functionality and something non-trivial. You'll have to build your templates, uh, action templates. You'll start building your modules. Uh, and again, the developer experience on that front is not great. And last one is slow, slow and res uh, resource intensive. So recently I was doing a project where I built a lab of five, 500 uh, network devices, uh, specifically to test performance of different tools. Um, so what I found is that by, by using something like Nornir, um, we could get times two to times six performance speed. So like it was so much faster and it was also using so much less resources. So on that network, like Ansible was using 100% CPU, 100% RAM. With any programming language, it was using so much less. And another one, very, very funny. Um, some of you who already tried Ansible before probably encountered this. You read a blog article um, written like six months ago, right? And you try doing that and then um, it just doesn't work anymore because, uh, you know, it was 2.6, now it's 2.9, some of the stuff was deprecated and they do it quite often. So there are a lot of breaking changes. So this especially problem when you are like going to different uh, resources on the internet, articles, uh, blogs, videos, and they were done for a specific version. All right, enough in, about Ansible. Uh, let's talk about some, some real network automation tools. Um, so Nornir, um, this is what, well, how we present it, that it's pluggable, multi-threaded Python framework. Uh, and what it does for you is inventory management and um, concurring tasks. So, Again, just to reiterate here, the only thing that Nornir is doing for you is inventory management, which is hosts, groups, and your variables. And like you have group variables, which can be inherited to hosts and so on. And also concurrent task execution. I found that a lot of people do not really know how to do Python threading and some of these things. So Nornir can abstract that piece for you. Another very big benefit is that everything is in Python. So it's just another Python library to import. And you would not be really saying, I am building my network automation in Nornir. No, 
you will be saying, I'm building my network automation using Python. And all of these tools like Nornia, like other libraries that make on Napalm requests, uh, Flask and so on, are just libraries there. Um, because everything is, is in Python, you can extend, and, uh, extend it in any way you want and we'll see it today in the demo. And we are using threads on the backend, so it's, um, it proved to be quite fast. We are actually looking, uh, thinking about making it even more faster. There are some techniques we could use, but it's still like early stages here. Uh, we are not reinventing wheels, okay? So we are not creating new backend libraries to actually connect to devices. We are using something that is already mature in Python ecosystem. Stuff like NetMiko, Napalm, NC Client, all these libraries have been used for, for years already. So we are just reusing that. We will uh, cache for you the connection. So uh, if you have a task which uses the same thing, it will just reuse it during the whole program. And because it's Python, you can use anything. And I mean anything you have in Python ecosystem. Your IDE support will have auto-completion. Your IDE will complain about if you have like wrong import. You can use linting. You can use static type checking. You can use Python debugger. Everything is a fair game. We also have very cool feature about filtering where we can filter based on anything, like any attribute or combination of attributes. You will see some of it today as well. And last but not the least, it's very easy integration with other Python frameworks. Once you start building your network automation for your environments, at some point you will probably want to migrate to like some kind of web frontend with the forms. Like you have a form to create a new user, provide a new VLAN, provide new alt VPN, whatever it is, right? And that integration is done very easy because, again, it's just another Python library to import. So you can just use Nornier inside of Flask, inside of Django, or whatever web framework you are using. Uh, something that Kirk uh, said and something that really stand out was, the more I work with Nornier, the more I like it. The more I work with Ansible, the more I like Nornier. Found it um, very funny, but I do, uh, do agree with the statement 100%. Okay, uh, some development focus. We do our best maintaining backwards compatibility. Uh, during the major release, we don't break anything. Well, at least we're doing our best. Uh, even between major releases, we try to minimize breaking changes as much as we can. So we follow semantic versioning. Uh, we use modern CI tooling like linting, code styles, static type checking, unit testing to make sure the quali uh, code quality is decent. Uh, even um, our documentation goes through uh, continuous integration and automatically tested. So all examples in tutorials is part of that too. Okay, so what are use cases? Um, let me summarize it here. You can run it standalone, similar to how would you run Ansible uh, minus playbook. Uh, you can integrate it with web framework, for example. Or you could integrate it with something like PyTest to do a network testing, really unexplored area in network automation right now. Uh, some of the latest features, we added Netcon support very recently. Um, and we also have this feature called processors where you can inject, well, it's kind of like a hooks uh, during the task execution where you can inject your part, piece of code which will do something when during the task or after the task has finished, like the usual use case is some kind of notification like to Slack or something like this. Um, very interesting one. All right, with that, um, enough talking slides, let's talk code. Um, okay. And there is one thing I really like to do, um, and some people call me crazy because of it, is that um, I really like doing live coding on the stage, so this is what we are going to do today. Um, so let's see, let's get started. So I have here an empty, an empty Python file, I call it sandbox py. Um, so let's get started. Obviously the first step would be installing, installing Nornier with pip, like any other Python library, 
um, we it's Python 3.6 or higher, so we don't support earlier versions of Python. So the first one is obviously import. So from Nornier, uh, we import in it Nornier. And uh, people in the back, give me please th thumbs up if you can see font all right, or thumbs down. OK, good. Cool. So we, we import this in it Nornier, uh, Nornier function. And uh, let's create Nornier object. So we'll say in it Nornier. And we have to provide a config file. So I will first do it, and then I will show it. So I have this and an R. I have this NR config YAML file. And what we will be doing is that I will be putting code here and then copy pasting it into the interpreter, at least for this part. OK, so let me first show to you the uh, config file. OK, so this is how config file looks like. It's um, obviously in our documentation. I will go through some of, this piece, uh, some of the pieces here. Uh, number of workers, this is number of simultaneous threads. Uh, right now, I will be using 10. Um, another very important piece is the inventory. We are using a plugin called uh, Simple Inventory. We'll see how it looks like in just a second. You provide three files, host, groups, and default YAML. We also have built-in uh, Ansible inventory. So if you have Ansible, you can import your inventory dire directly from there. We have integration with two IPAM systems, uh, Netbox and Ansot. But you can also run your, uh, you can write your own inventory plugin. It's very easy to do. We actually have an example. You just need to provide us two dictionaries, as far as I remember, and you're all set. Very easy to do. So in case you have like your own database on the back end, um, very easy to add that support uh, there. All right, so we have this simple inventory. Let's take a look on, on the host file, then groups and defaults. And by the way, I have, so what I have is that I have 10 uh, CSR 1000 Vs running ISXC 17.1 in the, in the cloud. And uh, you can see that they all have linked to a switch for management. So this net management, met, management network but they're also connected somehow between each other. Right, so let's go through this inventory. So here I have device name, and then we have host name, we have groups, and then we have data. Now, this is like a, either the main FQDN or the IP address. This is how we will be connecting to the device. Uh, this groups, uh, well, we, we are listing to which groups we belong. Unlike Ansible, uh, the, every host can be part of several groups. Um, so we don't have that restriction. Now, something that goes inside of data is completely arbitrary. So this is something like your variables you would put there. So text is something I just came up with. So we have on the top level what we call uh, mandatory parameters. And then under the data, it's like free for all. Uh, why we are doing it this way. So, uh, by the way, the mandatory ones are host name, groups, and then we have username, password, port, and connection options. The reason why we are doing this way, separating this data from the, like, the rest, is that we can, um, we can enforce, if something is incorrect, we can tell you about this very early. For example, if I misspell it here, like this, yeah, and I run this code, and uh, of course I would need to run my interpreter. Okay, uh, let me, I see a big mistake that I did that some of it probably can be seen on this con uh, contrast. So let me redo it here. Did I save it?
Okay, let's do it once one more time. Okay, so now, now we have this in um, Nornier object, and we loaded all of our devices. So let me let me now show you the groups. So in groups, again, it's the same thing. You can put your username, password here if you want to. But you also have this uh, key called data where you could put anything you want. In this case, I put NTP servers. And then the last file is defaults. So you can see because I have all of this the same devices, the same platform with the same credentials, I put my credentials here. A platform iOS, username Cisco, password Cisco. And then under the data, I again have arbitrary data. So now let's look at the inheritance chain here. So if I say an inventory hosts, and let me import pprint function to make it a little bit more easy to read. So I have these 10 hosts loaded. I can say R1 is equal to um, inventory hosts R1. And then here if I say host name, so we get this from the here. If I say groups, we also get it from here. If I say username, we get it from default. We get it from here. I say platform, we also get it from here. And let's say NTP. If I say R1 NTP, we get this from the groups. So you can see like, like how we do this inheritance of variables from the groups uh, down to the device. Okay. And then if you say, we also have in our inventory groups. So we should have two groups. We have group New York and group Lisbon. So five of the routers is in one group and uh, another half is uh, another part, uh, in another group. All right. So now that we have that, uh, let's actually do something useful. So something uh, like a hello world in uh, Nornir would uh, look like commands gathering from all of the devices. So let's actually do it. So we have to import the plugin which will call NetMiko. So if you say Nornir plugins, uh, I think it was networking. And then we import uh, netmiko send command, for example. And now I can say nr.run So I will say nr.run netmiko send command. And then I have to provide arguments. So um, this is documented in the so if I go to our documentation, I say network plugin tasks networking, netmiko send command. We have here um, command string, use timing, and some other arguments which will go directly to the um, uh, directly to the backend library, which is in this case is netmiko. So right now we want to use this parameter, command string. So command string is equal to, let's say, show IP interface brief. And then I also want to import one more function. And the reason I'm not putting imports in the proper order is that because I will be copy pasting this uh, directly in the interpreter. So if I say Nornir uh, plugins tasks text, no, I think it was functions import. Um, plugins function text, yeah. Import print result. And then I want to print this on the console in a nice form. 
So what we really have is that we have two imports and we are running the Miko send command with command show up interface brief and we will be printing the result to the console. So let's go ahead and run this. So you could see like when I copy pasted there was some delay because it was running. But it took like what, five seconds to run on 10 devices. So you can see this is show up interface, brief output from every single device. Uh, let me do it again. So I am copy pasting right now. And you can see that it took literally like one second to do right now. And we have show version from every single device. So this is what like hello world in Nornir. Now, uh, it's very likely that uh, you would want to do some filtering, right? Like, um, I don't want to run everything on all of my devices, but only on part of it. Uh, you can do it. You, uh, we will see how we can do filtering. Um, we have a number of ways to do filtering, and I'll um, page in the docs on that. I'll be using the most advanced one because it's also the most powerful one. We borrowed an uh, idea from the web framework called Django. So if I say from Nornir core filter import F, this is our magic F uh, filter function. So now I want to do filtering. So uh, in the, let's do very easy filtering. So let's say R6 is equal to an R filter. Right now I will not be using this F filter function. So I can say R6 filter and I can say name should be equal to R6. Okay, so if I do that, and now I say uh, R6 inventory hosts, you only have R6 here. Now let's uh, filter based on the group. Let's say I want to have group uh, Lisbon. So Lisbon is equal to an R filter, and here I will be using this F, uh, uh, F filter function. And there is a little bit of magic involved there, uh, but it's uh, properly documented. So I have here Dunder, Dunder contains. It directly corresponds to either Python function. So there is a Python function called uh, like this contains. So this is how this one is formed. And we will say this should contain group Lisbon. So what we essentially saying is that if groups, if we call function contains on the groups and the Lisbon is there, then we, we accept this device in our group. So if we do this and I say again Lisbon uh, inventory hosts. Now I have devices from 6 to 10. Cool. Uh, what else can you do? Uh, let me now filter based on tags. And you can see that groups is like top level, tags is here underneath. So I can do, let's say, ISR 4300. And I can say filter F tax also contains um, ISR 4300. Now we have uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So this one, this one, and so on. So every, every device which contains this stack, I can oh, even uh, I can even mix those if I really want to. I can say and it should be in the group Lisbon. So I can do this. Okay, and now if I say uh, I start 4300 Lisbon. You can see that now I have only routers 6, 8, and 10, but not 2 and 4. 
So you can mix and match this any way you want. All right. Now, the next piece is that you obviously want to filter and then run something on it. So let's actually do it. So on this group, ISR 40, uh, 300 Lisbon, I want to say um, run, again, the same thing, let me send command, for example. Command string show ARP. Now, let's actually do show up interface brief to show that they are different. Okay, so if I do this, and then I print result, uh, result, so I should only see output from 6, 8, and 10. So if I look here, I have 10, I have 6, and I have 8. All right, cool. So now we are done with like basics of the framework. Uh, now we all do something more interesting. And on, um, at Cisco Live US, I had a similar session, and I had, we had the use case, which I was building live from scratch. I decided to take it one step forward. And what we are going to do, we have a choice of four things. So we are able to choose one of these, and I will be building it live in like 10 minutes. So uh, what we are going to do, um, we'll vote, uh, vote with hand, hands. Uh, please vote for only for one out of four. So let me go through this list real quick. The first uh, choice is that we'll gather a number of CLI outputs, a couple of commands, and save them to a file, for uh, one for every device. Second option, we'll configure devices from the Jinja template. Third option, we'll use RESTConf uh, interface to get LDP neighbors, and we'll print uh, links between devices on the screen. Uh, option number four, we'll retrieve XML config and also save it to a file. So who would like to me to do option one? Raise your hand. Pl please hire so I can like count, count them. Oh, like around four. Okay, second option. <laughs> Okay, um, okay, third option. Okay, fourth option. Okay, um, let's do again option two and three. Uh, you, uh, so people who voted for other options, you can re-vote now. Uh, option number two. Okay, option number three. Okay, it, it will be option number three. Okay. Okay, so restcon get LDP neighbor screen connection to the screen. Uh, and we have 13 minutes left. All right, challenge accepted. Uh, okay, so obviously we have to import, uh, again, Norni, uh, init Nornir, and I would like to create a main function where I will say uh, init Nornir and we will provide in our config YAML. Again, the same thing like we did before. <coughs> You'll have to create a function called, uh, let's say, fetch and um, parse LDP neighbors. Okay. Um, okay, here we'll do Python bo boilerplate here uh, to call this. Cool. Uh, yes. Now we, because we are, we'll be using um, RESTConf. I need to know the the model. So I am using Postman to explore that. Uh, let me see if I will be able to find it out really quick. So if I go to Yang Models, uh, Vendor, Cisco, XC. So I'm, right now I'm exploring Yang Models. And um, open config LDP, I think it's called. Yep. And I need I need container. To find the proper container.
neighbors counters should be here container no here okay so it's container LDP so if I say it like this ah uh, okay let me first check that uh, it's working 404 not found There goes our, our live uh, live coding though. Uh, Oh, okay. I remember now. Yep. So, yep. Okay, now we are on the right track. Okay, so I have open config LDP. So I will need this URL. Actually, I need to change something here. LDP upper, I will use this model instead, the native one. Uh, I need this prefix and I have an LDP state details, okay? So this LLDP state details. LLDP entries. Okay, cool. We have it now, so I need this URL. Uh, I need this URL and we go back here and I say that, so I will need to import the request library to do HTTP, uh, HTTP. I want to say that I want to build a URL where this should be task host hostname and then uh, let's say for every neighbor uh, for every neighbor for LLDP entry in uh, oh hold on so I need response where I will call I will call request library dot get, and I will say URL. Um, I need headers is equal to headers, so I need to provide response headers, and I need to do authorization. And uh, this should be task host username and task host password. So we do that, and then I need to provide the headers. Uh, so header is accept application yank minus data plus JSON, I think I got it right, but we'll see. Uh, and then I have this URL and I make request, then I will say data is equal to response JSON uh, and then I need this key and this list cool and I will say for every entry okay so remote interface is equal to LDP entry this remote device uh, is equal to LDP entry LDP entry 
device ID. Okay, and local interface is equal to LDP entry uh, local interface. I don't think I will have time like to finish all of this, so um, we will we'll keep it like this. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to return this data output without parsing. So I need to import nornir core task import result. I want to return this as a result from my custom task. I will say that return result where host is equal to task.host and the result is equal to data. So usually when I was practicing this, I would like parse this and do like some kind of string. But unfortunately, we don't really have time for that. So I will just return this, this piece. Alternatively, I would parse all of this here and then add the string to like result instead. So we have this and then I need uh, the same function from Nornir, plugins, uh, functions, text, import, print result. And then I have to say nr dot result is equal to nr dot run uh, fetch. Did I call this fetch and parse LDP neighbors? And I will just print result. Uh, Okay, and you can see because of the ID support, I can like spot some of the mistakes. Okay, this uh, and of course this. If I say time Python uh, scripts uh, sandbox py, not name. Task host host name interesting connection there. Oh oh yeah, uh, remember because uh, we are using self. Um, this well, we don't trust the cert. I have to say verify false. If I run this again, uh, if did I save this? Headers URL. I think I have it correct, but for some reason I can't ping the devices, it seems. Okay. Failed to establish new connection, host name or not provided. Connection error. Um, HTTPS task host host name, this correct. Rescom data, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Requests, get URL, uh, headers, authentication, verify false. It. Oh, yeah, okay. F string, of course. So now if I do this, now I can actually see uh, the details here. So for every device, I was able to fetch this RESTCON data. So again, as I said, unfortunately, I don't have time to do more here, to do parsing and like pre uh, pretty output. But the code for that is available in the repo. So if you want, you can take a look. I will do one small prepared demo, something that um, I haven't shown to a lot of people, but something that I fi find very interesting. So I have this. Um, netconf configure and so this netconf uses um, the task called edit uh, edit and see config from yaml 
And what it does, it actually, so NetConf by default works with XML. I wrote a custom function which converts dictionary to XML. And I am providing input to this without any Jinja templates for XML, without anything. My input for this script is this config, which looks like this. If I run this, uh, if I say Python uh, scripts um, netconf configure, let me actually uncomment this. So this data here is adheres to the Yang model. And if I go to like some of the devices and say show VRF brief, you can see there is only one VRF. If I do it now, we have two VRFs, and they are changed with a single operation. So I'm not even logging to the device to check what is there. It goes and pushes the desired state. So if I, I, I can even say random here and rerun the script. And you can see that VRF is random now. There are no Jinja templates on the back end doing that. All right, let, let's uh, go back to the slide and uh, close the session. Right, so Nornier is flexible multi-threaded Python automation framework, and I hope I proved to you that it's really flexible, it is scalable. Uh, we were running those tasks and the output was almost instant. Uh, Nornier, the only thing it does, it uh, abstracts for you inventory and task ex execution. And because everything is in Python, you can use everything that is available in Python ecosystem and integrate it with anything else available in Python. Uh, code is available. Um, we have our docs. You can talk to us on our forum, to the development team on, on our Slack. You can, of course, open an issue if there is a bug. All right, um, I'm, you can find me uh, at DMV, go on Twitter, GitHub. If you're interested in uh, live streaming about network programmability, check out my Twitch. And I also have a lot of recordings on YouTube for that. And occasionally I blog on my uh, blog, dmfigo.me. The blog article with performance testing will be up in coming weeks. Uh, uh, I, uh, I hope you will find it useful. With that, uh, Please complete session uh, session survey. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, this is how we speakers can improve ourselves. All right, Vizet, thank you so much, and I hope you have a great Cisco life. And please do not forget about rebounds up here. Thank you.